Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and we're back with the Total War Saga Troy video. We've spoken about the trailer, we've spoken about the Hound of Hades, and now we look towards the Griffin Patriarch, the King of Beasts. Its speciality is flight, its location is the sacred Griffin Haunts, and it probably gets very, very angry when you call it a giant pigeon. Like Cerberus, there's a lot to discuss, so let's not waste any more time and jump right in. So what is the Griffin Patriarch? Well, we have some backstory here. When you are a griffin, it is easy to look down upon everyone and everything. From the vantage point of the deep sky, everything is minuscule, everyone is a piece of prey. As the undisputed animal king of the earth and sky, griffins differ only to gods, and even pull Apollo's chariot when he voyages out from Olympus. Griffin relationships with humans are complicated. Those that believe in their existence at all are more taken in by tales of the vast amount of gold that the griffins bring back from the threshold of the underworld, and some insist that they feed their nuggets to their young. Appropriately, such people consider it a waste of perfectly good gold, and take care to redress them. Yeah, I don't blame them. The only ones that are capable of this, however, are the Arimaspoi, a tribe that shares the lands of the griffins, the only ones the Griffins are willing to coexist with, albeit in a state of unrelenting rivalry. So the Griffins themselves have some sort of weird relationship with a tribe here. Okay, that's pretty interesting. In fact, we do find out that we're able to recruit these humans if we capture and tame the Griffin Patriarch. So, okay, this sounds kind of fun. The Griffin itself has four battle abilities which are as follows. Bronze Feathers. The mighty Griffin's wings are solid shields as much as they are tools of flight providing resistance and armor bonuses, but its soft underbelly is vulnerable to arrow fire while in flight. Will it take more damage when it's flying? That's something we haven't really seen yet in Total War, especially in Warhammer. I don't know how this could work without it being too much of a debuff though, we're gonna have to wait and see for that. Savage Gust is the second one. A flap of those wings can create an incredible wind, disrupting and damaging all caught in its wake. I'm assuming this will act like some sort of, like, explosion? Something like that makes sense, I think? The next one is Rallying Screech. The Griffin is an inspiring, powerful sight, and the significance of its presence is not lost on its allies, who will fight harder and longer when they hear its cry. Okay, so I'm assuming this is a big buff type of ability. Leadership bonuses, I'm assuming, with melee attack power? Stuff like that kind of makes sense. The last special ability is Flight. The Griffin can fly quickly across the battlefield, making it a devastating flanker and surprise attacker. Well, we can see wings on it, so I'm assuming, yeah, it's going to be able to fly. I'm not too sure why that is a battle ability unless it's got something else tied to it, or maybe it's just really, really fast. We've got some information regarding the playstyle. Managing the harmony between the Griffins and the Arimus boy following them everywhere requires careful thought and action. Okay. Depending on whether the favor lies with the Griffins or the Arimus boy, by the way, I am probably butchering that, so I do apologize, or whether the harmony is relatively well preserved, certain specially tailored advantages are made available to you. The Griffins depend on their incredible maneuverability, speed, and flanking skills though they could strain one's gold economy. The Arimaspoi, on the other hand, are avaricious enough to improve gold mining, and are the only combat units in the game that are not only immune to the effects of rough terrain, they are even stronger on it. Okay, so let's discuss this. Apparently there seems to be a sort of mechanic that you need to balance or go to your favor, and this is really strange to me, as obviously the griffins itself will make your gold economy get worse. I'm assuming that they'll be quite powerful on the battlefield, so it's kind of like a double-edged sword. Less gold, yes, but more griffins? I guess that makes sense. Though if you want more gold, then you can get more of these tribesmen. It's interesting, to say the least, even if we're just looking at some words about it. I can't wait to see how this gets fleshed out. As I said in the previous video, I haven't played just yet. I've wanted to record this first to get my first impressions before actually jumping into the game. But I like the idea. It's kind of like a whole balance type of situation. I hope this is actually the case, because it does sound pretty cool. There are going to be some special faction abilities available to the player if they're able to recruit this griffin. There are five in total, which are as follows. The first is Harmony. Whether you favor the Amospoi, the Griffins, or their alliance will decide a set of powerful buffs affecting those units. Favoring the Griffins powers up the Griffin Patriarch itself. 
while their human rivals provide gold if preferred. Strengthening their alliance means any army with both units is more powerful. Okay, so you have an element of choice here, and yeah, this sounds pretty cool. The second faction ability is Griffin Eri and Arimus Boy Camp. The unique builds used to recruit Griffins and Arimus Boy. They increase unit caps and are buildable in major or gold settlements. I'm assuming that these are two different buildings. Okay, doable. They're two different types of units and it does kind of make sense. The third ability is Griffin Hunt. The Griffin Patriarch's army can enter this stance prepping for the next turn. On that following turn, they have additional vision and campaign movement range, as well as massively increased chance to ambush enemies they attack. Oh, will they be able to ambush as moving? Kind of like Skaven Stalk Stance? I mean, that sounds kind of cool. The fourth is post-battle options. Feeding your griffins post-battle will heal them and provide experience. Okay, cool. While preparing a conquered settlement for nesting will decrease the cost of griffin buildings. I have a feeling that griffins are going to be very, very popular through this campaign playthrough if you decide to acquire the griffin. And the last is Agent Actions. The Griffin Patriarch can search for its young or feed them as a unique Agent Action. This provides various bonuses as well as moving the Harmony Bar in either direction. Okay, cool, so this is how you kind of move it. I must admit that everything so far sounds pretty interesting. So like Cerberus, we have four unique units. The first up are the Arimaspoi Hunters. The Arimaspoi of the Far North share a strange mixture of kinship and fierce rivalry with the Griffins. These Scythians expertly roaming the wilderness around the caves of Boreas, the Northern Wind, are themselves uncanny enough, one-eyed, and yet sharper sighted than any normal human. Okay, cool. They decorate their weapons and armor with gold plundered from griffin nests and feathers plucked from griffins themselves. Even their speech emulates the harsh clipped cries of the winged beast they battle. Some attribute their obsession with gold to nothing more than greed, yet the Arimus boy claim the gold carries pieces of their kingsmen's souls, reclaimed by the griffins from the threshold of the underworld. It's pretty interesting lore here. Well, mythos. They look like basic shield and spear units, though I'm assuming that they're going to be quite fast and pretty deadly in close combat. But let's move on to the second unit, the Arimus Boy Spearmen. Great two-handed spears allow these Arimus Boy to more effectively hunt and defend themselves. They are slower than their compatriots, but otherwise more hardy and more threatening. I'm assuming that these will be anti-large units if they've got great spears. And seeing as we're going to be playing in a Mythos DLC where there's going to be quite a decent amount of large monsters, hey, this might actually help out quite a bit. The third unit is the Arimus Boy Skirmishers, spear-throwing horse riders with quick movement and quicker wits. Like all Arimus Boy, they benefit from their expert monster hunting training and are hardy soldiers in any sort of battle. Horsemen Skirmishers, okay, they're always quite valuable, especially since horsemen units as a whole are very rare in Troy, so I'm actually looking forward to these types of units. I quite like them in Warhammer 2 with Marauder Javelin Throwers and so on, so yeah, maybe using them in the same way will be quite good. And finally, the Lesser Griffin. The Griffin is among the most noble of all liminal, dual-natured, mythological beasts, incorporating into itself the animal kings of both land and air, as well as evoking the invisible threads between earth, human, and sky, divine. More pragmatically, it has long been known among savvy treasure hunters throughout the ancient world that where griffins are, there is gold as well. No one knows how the griffins find it, and some insist they feed nuggets to their young. Appropriately, these people consider it a waste of perfectly good gold, and take care to redress it. Okay, so you can get more than just one griffin, you can get the patriarch and then a few lesser griffins. This is going to be a fun doom stack, I'm imagining, and I can't wait to see Okoy's video on this, because we know it's coming eventually, don't we? I mean, a bunch of giant angry flying birds, this is going to be kind of cool. There's a lot of different mythos coming into this, so this should be quite interesting. Next, we have some information regarding the strengths of the Griffin Patriarch. The Griffins and the Arimus Boy present an interesting dynamic contrast between campaign and battle gameplay. Careful choices between the favor of two tribes. On the battlefield, both through the Griffins flying and the Arimus Boy's extreme skill on any terrain, the hero is empowered as a tactical master, flanking the enemy from any direction, even from above. 
Okay, so this is going to focus around a skirmishing based combat system. I don't really recall too much skirmishing within Troy as it already was, well, barring that of, say, the Amazons, probably. So it should be interesting to see this come into play, especially with flying monsters. But that's all the information we have regarding the Griffin and the Griffin Patriarch. What do you guys think about this so far? It looks like it's going to be a quite interesting playstyle. I want to see how this goes with the whole uh, campaign and battle mechanics too. This should be quite different. It's at least good to know that Creative Assembly are making everything regarding the mythical monsters, as we're getting three of them, quite radically different. So yeah, again, it feels like they're going to add for a lot of replayability, which is good. I mean, a Total War game in itself is already quite replayable, especially when you start bringing in different mechanics, different campaigns, and of course mods. But if they're going to bring in something like this, then it should be quite cool. But let me know what you think about the Griffin in the comments below, and let's start a bit of a discussion. But with that, my friends, we've come to the end of our video. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, might I suggest giving the video a like, or even subscribing to the channel, as it really does help us out. In the description section below are various links to different social media platforms, such as Facebook, Instagram, and Discord. Also in the description section is an affiliate link with Element Games where you could buy loads of hobby based products, not just Warhammer, for 10 to 25% off. Making a purchase using that link and also our special code, which is also in the description, supports the channel at no extra cost to you, which we think is rather cool. A big thank you to our patrons, your support means the world to us. It's amazing that people want to help a small channel like us grow and get to a higher level of content. A big thank you to Gibraltar LUSC, Ryan Birch, Andrew Prince, and Okro for subscribing to us at our fame level. You guys are super cool. And a big thank you to Edward Yule, VS Fasan, Aaron Whitman, and Shaggy for subscribing to us at our king level. Honestly, we can't thank you all enough. And lastly, a big thank you to all of you for liking, sharing, and commenting on these videos. Honestly, it's because of you guys that the channel's been growing at such a great pace lately, so we can't thank you all enough. But with that, my friends, thank you so much for watching once again, and we shall see you all again very, very soon. Have a good day.